We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boy's hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillion logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for content. What's up, Vex heads, and welcome to episode 41 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast that says, Privyet Utah e Spasiba. It's also a Flags for Good podcast, so go check out flagsforgood.com slash flagged for, the number four, content, and use code flagged for content, spelled the same way, to get some sweet, sweet discounts over there. And as always, check out our link tree for all those juicy links, uh, like our Discord, our Patreon, uh, and my notes here just say a lot more. So let's uh, go with that. And uh, okay, so just a heads up for this episode, a big part of why I'm late coming out with this one is that it was an absolute nightmare to edit. Uh, I want to make it absolutely clear that that was not my guest's fault in any way, shape or form. Uh, it also wasn't my fault in any way, shape, or form. It's just that the internet can be fun sometimes. Um, so I had to kind of cobble this one together with the backup files that I had that were all out of order with zero context and just random numbers and digits for names. Uh, and you will notice at times that there may be a weird break or shift, but I did try to keep those pretty minimal. And if I do say so, I think I did a pretty good job of it. Um, it just took a lot longer. And also for audio listeners, the quiz near the end pretty much requires you to be able to see the flag since we didn't describe them. So just for the audio version, this won't be in the video, um, but I went back and did some slight voiceovers for that just to make it more interactive for y'all as well. Because I know a lot of people listen to this just on audio. Um, anyway, I hope those. Uh, I hope it's not too jarring just hearing my voice break in at a slightly different cadence every once in a while. But you'll you'll get used to it. Um, in any case, our guest this week is Danny Pedre, and it was an absolute blast to record. It was so much more fun to record than to edit. I will tell you that uh, easily. And it is a little bit of a longer one, so that is all I've got here up top. Without further ado. Let's go on and head into the episode. Folks, we have yet another amazing guest this week. You know him as the Panamaniac. You know him as the Encyclopediac. And you know him from having a flag collecting knack. It's the 305 Vex head, Danny Pedro. Hello, Malikim, everybody. What's up, Danny? Not much. Just uh, living the life here in good old 305. Hell yeah, Miami. man. 305, that is the Miami, Miami, Florida. Okay, right on. Oh, yeah. Figured as much. As much as I want to get out of this really expensive city. You gotta be proud right? of your heritage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how are things in Miami right now? Um, I mean, things are getting more expensive. Rent is going up. People are moving. Actually, we recently got the first population decline of over 70,000 people in like two or three years. Since like the 1970s or 80s, I what? Yeah, Miami's population is declining, likely huh. due to the the uh, rising costs of living and just everything so expensive. Like when we Could were in Port when we were in Portugal, a glass like a, a bottle of wine was like two or three euros. That's super yeah. cheap. Here in Miami, at least in South Beach or Miami Beach, that things like at least twenty dollars or more, depending on the wine. It's yeah, very, probably. it's very, it's very expensive here. Even Miami just like a, even just like a cocktail is like eighteen to twenty bucks at a bar. It's ridiculous, right? Right. And I don't drink. I just know that because I hear that from other people. So. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. I don't drink. <laughs> I don't. I'm sixteen. I can't drink legally. Right. So, but yeah. But I guess a sixteen year old in Miami still knows the prices of cocktails and bars because you know we know the prices of everything Miami. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Even even fuel enough. prices are going up, even though it's everywhere. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Florida's, uh, it's been a minute since I've been to Florida, and I think the most couple, like, actually the two most recent times I went to Florida, it was just to go to, like, Gainesville. So, like, very far north, especially right. considering, like, where you're at. 
Yeah, I'm um, all the way down south. Yeah. But you know, it's no 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 lack no shortage of gators in Gainesville. Right. And not just the football kind, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, way down south in the land of traders, rattlesnakes, and alligators run away. <laughs> you know that so song? I don't think I've ever actually been to my. I've been to the Miami airport to fly to uh, Puerto Rico. Mm. But I don't think I've been to Miami proper. You should come, although you should probably bring a lot of cash. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, especially considering what you've said. Well, yeah. yeah. At some point, I will have to come. Um, we'll get to all that later. Before we get into any of that, though, let's yes. tell the Vexheads what's on the flagpole today. And today, that is, we are going to go over our usual overrated and underrated flags. We will chat about some Florida flags and a Florida adjacent one. Some of you may already know what that one might be. Uh, then Daniel is going to take us on a collector's journey and show us slash quiz us on the more rare flags he owns. Uh, but first, before we get into any of that, Danny, I like to ask my guests, what is your favorite flag? Second Spanish Republic, hands down. I actually have it right there. The Second Spanish Republic, and we also see the International Brigades flag in Andy's uh, window, which is based off of the Second Spanish Republic flag. The, Indeed. For, I like it for both like political leaning reasons reasons but also because of uh design of i'm okay I, I absolutely love the design of that coat of arms um and i just and the flag itself i love the colors it's actually my three favorite colors not in the order but it's still my three in order it's yellow sure. purple and red but this flag has all three so that's a huge win for me and yeah. honestly it's just such an aesthetically pleasing flag it's it's I don't know, it just gives me this vibe. I just love it. And it's not common to see purple on flags. The only country flag that has purple on it right now is the Dominica. You can count Nicaragua or El Salvador, but that's just a little strip on the tiny rainbow. So I don't really count it. Right, yeah, yeah. But, Barely count. Yeah, I absolutely love the flag of the Second Spanish Republic. Uh, I have some other favorite flags, uh, like Israel, Israel, if you want to say it in Hebrew, and... Um, Suriname and of course Panama, where I am half Panamanian. The Panamaniac. I mean, I I figure that would be up there anyway. Yeah. So yeah, country. take us through the Second Spanish Republic one. So like for uh for those of us who are just listeners, not viewers, like walk us through this and how it's different than the current Spanish flag. The Second Spanish Republic flag, the bands are a one to one to one ratio, while the current Spanish flag, the bands are uh two to four to two, I believe, or one to two to one, depending on how you say it. Uh, also, the colors are different. The current Kingdom of Spain flag is red, yellow, red. Meanwhile, this was the, the famous tricolor, the um, red, yellow, and purple, rojo, amarillo, y morado. That's what it's called. And the purple, if I'm not mistaken, comes from a Castilian movement. Um... Which, even in the Castilian socialist flag today, the, which has the castle of Castile, a purple background mm -hmm. and a red star, it's, the, it's, it's, it's basically the, the color of Castile, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, although there has been actually some like, like debate over the legitimacy of the color, given that there's, a, there's like this, um, I, don't even, I don't even know how to describe it, but some say that the color is more burgundy or like a light kind of reddish slash burgundy-ish kind of color with like a bit okay. of a pink on the tongue. So well, that, that reminds but, me of like the, uh, sorry to like butt in here, but like that reminds me of the, like there's some debate over like what color the lion from the Leon part of the, like in the current yeah. Spanish kind of arms, like some, some uh, replicated like pink, some are more purple, you know, there's like kind of opinions on it for some reason, but yeah. The the thing about the Spanish coat of arms today, like in this coat of arms during the Republic, it was red. That's how it's supposed to be. But now it's officially pink, I believe. However, right. it's in the official official description. I'm not sure. I'm not not too knowledgeable on Spanish heraldry, but it's it's red. I think there. And the thing about the current Spanish coat of arms, the one that you see on the flag. It's mm. technically not correct in the sense of it doesn't follow heraldic rules. One key indicator of that is that the uh, the coat of arms of the Bourbons, which is in the middle, the little blue oval with three fleur de lises. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. It, within the shield, the escutcheon, or however you pronounce it, 
of the bigger, the greater coat of arms, the bigger coat of arms element, is that's not how it's supposed to be. In fact, the coat of arms, it's supposed to be that the inner shield within the big shield, I don't know all of the terminology, but it's supposed to be in the same shape as, you know, the, uh, the bigger shield. Which if you look at the coat of arms of, or on the flag of Portugal, you'll see that you'll, there's the border, the red border with the white interior. It's all the same shape. Right. And the little blue um, shield shapes, I don't know what they're called, with the dots in them, those are also the same shape as the main escutcheon. That's how it's supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not a heraldic okay. expert, but that's what I believe I read. And if I'm not wrong, like the uh, like the current Spanish one, like the bourbon thing is like in a like oval, right? Like in a yes. almost circle, yeah, kind of thing. It's like in an oval. I have a Spanish flag here, actually. I mean, uh, I, this one is a really high quality one I got at a shop in Sevilla. Uh, ironic, like I'm an anti-nationalist, but the store was nationalist themed, but I didn't care. I had a bunch of flags on a really good quality stuff too. This is like a silky, sure, yeah, yeah. silky rayon material. It's actually kind of shiny in the sun. You can see it, but right, you can see yeah. there, the lion is pink. And then there's the, uh, the oval, uh, coat of arms of the bourbons there in the middle. Okay. Yeah. I am seeing that. I, I'm. It's funny because like when I when I Google search the flag of Spain, there's like a few different ones that pop up. It's usually the oval, which I think is correct, but there are ones that have it in a shield style, which I'm wondering if they're not just like overcorrecting, kind of, or not overcorrecting, but like they're uh, you know, wishful yeah. thinking kind of thing. That is that is a more her traditional heraldic interpretation of the Spanish coat of arms, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spanish herald. I mean, it's. It's a coat of arms made. This coat of arms here that you see on the flag of Spain, it's, you know, uh, it was it was officialized by the Spanish heraldry department, and so this is official. And by their logic, this is correct, but it doesn't necessarily follow traditional heraldic rules. Again, right. if anyone can correct me on that, feel free. I don't want this to be labeled as misinformation, but that is the impression that I'm getting from what I have. Yeah, so. hey, plus, you know, drives engagement for the show. So, you know, we, we exactly. always love it. <laughs> yeah, always right. love that. So right on. So that is the, that's your favorite. Well, not that one, but the, uh, the, the, the one second, behind the second you. Republic, second, yes. Yeah, Second Republic one is your Another, favorite. One last thing to note about the Second Republic flag is that the coat of arms is in the center of the flag rather than in the current flag. It's more to the left, offset. Right, right, right. Huh. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, not yeah. I like I don't know. They seem like almost variations on a theme. Yeah, um, it's all very. Obviously, Spanish. you change the colors, you change the band size, uh, you shift it toward the hoist. Yeah, yeah, the, the hoist. Um, yeah, it's still very distinctly Spanish, though. Nothing. I do love. Yeah, I mean, like part of the reason that I even own this one back here, the International Brigades one, is because of that like cool color combination, like the red, yeah. the gold, the purple. Like it is very uh unique and just very like i don't know it's very visually appealing to yeah. the point where i'm surprised like more countries don't uh incorporate like a similar color scheme or something but you know i mean yeah I mean, the, what makes issue, it the issue with purple is its association historically at least partially historically with uh royalty although that yeah at least in may not be at the most accurate because historically purple has been used very rarely in modern or uh, medieval or renaissance kingdoms or monarchies, mm -hmm. more burgundy has been used. But the association is still with royalty when it comes to purple. Yeah. And then there's also the aspect of obtaining the color, which back then was obtained, I believe, through sea snails. Or I don't know which type, but it's a sea snail. And very, yeah. and you had to get a lot, a lot of sea snails to make enough that they prefer to dye fabric. Like, yeah, like, I feel even, like they... even, even like a band on a flag, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. I feel like they would have benefited from like a high school art class where it was like, hey, you can mix red and blue. Yeah. You can I was actually just make that. purple. But, yeah. You know, I, I like know what the simpler were. times, they didn't understand all these high tech things like mixing red and blue. Yeah. At least most uh, people didn't. Because <laughs> no, most I'm people sure. weren't artists. Back then, if you were an artist, you were probably like, you know, high up. Like yeah. Michelang Andrew. Michelangelo, I don't think he was a, uh, you know, uh, proletarian to say the least 
Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. It was also, more... I don't know if it quite works like that with dyes. I don't think you could just rick, mix a, a red and blue dye, but you know. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. like educationally, you know? That's like, yeah, you know, uh, people in the past were so silly. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> so that is your favorite. What is the, uh, you, you also wanted to talk about the flag that got you into flags. So I would love yes. to hear about what that is. There are actually two flags in specific, and they are regimental flags of the Union Army during the Civil War. The oh, okay. 20th, the twentieth Maine, and the sixty ninth New York. Okay, I'm not gonna know what those look like. I don't think. Um, they it's hard to describe them, uh, because you know they're regimental flags. They they can look very similar to other ones. But the twentieth sure, yeah. Maine had a bald eagle, um, and the twentieth Maine written on it, and something else, and on a blue background. The what's unique about the sixty ninth New York that it was an Irish regiment. So the background was green and it had a, um, a harp. I think it was the harp of Aaron or however you pronounce yeah. it. And it said 69th New York on the bottom. And I think it had a motto in clouds or the clouds were above or below the harp. Okay. But yeah, those I would love are, to see. I, I yeah. don't have them up on my screen right now. I'd love to see those. Oh, do you want me to pull uh, them up for you? Or? At some point. I'll definitely put them up in the edit and everything, but. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm not used to a uh, like a green background one, other than the, you know like the flag of Washington State, and that yeah feels like they're just trying to be different. It's not like an Irish connection. I don't I don't think in their case. So yeah, well, I mean, green backgrounds are not. I haven't seen very common. Like here, I have the People's Republic of Benin green background. It's not a very common background color. I don't think. No, yeah, that is like, interesting. There's, there's Pakistan, there's Turkmenistan, but you know those are exceptions and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think just for like for uh for u.s regimental flags though i feel like they're yeah. always like red white and blue and some uh, you know some order some variation yeah, yeah. there'll be an eagle yeah there'll be uh a star uh you know this that and the other yeah but although not now, typically think, a green one yeah now regimental flags i don't think are as big a practice like they still exist it's just i don't think they're as big a practice in the military as they were during the civil war now yeah. it's most flags that you see are flags of units or flags of the branch that the unit belongs to. Like right, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Totally. It's... All right, cool. So um, let's go ahead and get into under and overrated. Uh, and it's... as I've told my last few guests, you know, uh, you know, you can do it in whatever order you want to, but be cognizant of whichever one you end on is going to set the tone. So, you know. Okay. Um, underrated and overrated, correct? So for underrated, all right. I I really think that the um, that's actually kind of hard. I'm trying to think of a flag that people really like. I mean, hmm. because a lot of these flags that are really popular are still very good flags. I think the flag of the United States is overrated. A lot of people absolutely love the flag. I've seen plenty of like people who are indifferent to it, but I've also seen, especially in this country, a lot of people who are very like kind, like keen to it. At least, like even in the design aspect, it's not terrible, but I feel like it's like, especially being American and seeing it literally everywhere, it's kind of been like it's become bland to me. It's thirteen stripes, fifty stars in a blue canton. Like it's it's definitely a more kind of unique-ish design when it comes to Canton flags that I have seen. Yeah. But it's still a very common format. Like, there, like if you see in the background and the string of flags and the bunting, you see Togo, which has stripes, star, and a Canton. Then there's, um, i trying to think, um, Malaysia and Liberia. They're, they're similar. Liberia, I believe, was based off of the U.S. flag, but Malaysia was off of the West Indies flag, the West Indies company or something like that. I don't remember what it was called, the East Indies Company or something like that, the, the British uh, trade company. The yeah, I don't know. Period. As um, much about the Malaysian flag anyway, yeah. Yeah, but honestly, the U.S. flag is overrated. The colors are so common. It just looks generic to me, really. Yeah, the U.S. flag is... So that came up on my uh, the most recent episode before yours as the overrated as well. Hmm. And and it's come up like more than just once, more than twice now, really. But 
Yeah, I do wonder if it's like a function of like where we live and seeing it everywhere here. Yeah. Or if we would have that same opinion, like living elsewhere. And I think we might. Yeah. I think we might because it's still ubiquitous. Like it's still everywhere. Um, yeah. Regardless of whether you live here or not, you still are going to see it, you know, more if you live here than if you don't. But yeah. Yeah. The thing, like, the I, thing, yeah. I, I just have like a, a mixed relationship with it because like, obviously like, as we've talked about on this show, like it has been co-opted by like the worst people. Um, but you know, there's a big push to kind of undo that, like bring it back to, you know, like I feel patriotic from time to time and I would like to have a flag for that. But if I fly that one, it feels jingoistic and weird. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's unfortunate, but like we've got to do a little bit more to get it back. And then as far as like, it's interesting too because like it has inspired so many other flags like i know uh i i couldn't say like liberia for sure i don't know as much about malaysia's flag but i know the flag of like Brittany, france yes was, was inspired by the, by the u.s flag the they united had states had, like, of brazil flag in the 1800s was modeled after the u.s flag yes yeah france. yeah yeah. that's it we even too. have 13 stripes running off exactly and the, yeah and a proposal of the panamanian flag the sunburst flag i think it was called which, by the way, is absolutely horrendous, and the suns in the Canton look like a pair of testicles. But, oh, um, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's it's still inspired by the uh, United States flag. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like, it, it has inspired a lot of design, but I wonder if, like, those other designs make the U.S. one seem less original, even though it kind of was the original of that design. Yeah. Although I don't know, it's like a chicken and egg kind of situation, but... Uh, like no. I often think of like the Brittany flag and like how it would not look like that were it not for the U.S. flag. Obviously, yeah. Brittany has been around for longer than France has, longer than you know uh, a for lot sure. of countries. Yeah. But they didn't really have a unified flag until they kind of like took the idea of the U.S. one. They were like, "Hey, let's have like ermine things instead of the stars, yeah. and we'll make it black and white, like our national color." You know, and whatever the nine color. stripes symbolize. Yeah, yeah. go on that. Um. It's interesting because it's it's an interesting flag because like it like I, I think the reason part of the reason that Brittany picked that basic design for the theirs was they they were like, all right, well, it's the US. It's like the cradle of like freedom in the West, which maybe at the time it was. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't remember when they us. <laughs> came up with it, but yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I'll let you talk because I've got a complicated. No, nah, don't worry about it. But like. The thing about like the US, like I also have a personal grudge against it politically. But sure. like honestly it's been associated with so many bad things, the extermination and genocide of Native Americans, the oppression of African Americans and African descent people, and now Muslims in the Middle East, you know, with all the wars that we're fighting over there and the crap we're doing. But like on an aesthetic standpoint, to me the United States flag is just so boring and generic. Like the yeah. like the it's funny because here you have the flag of the state of Israel, albeit controversial, but we're not going to get into that. Um, it's also very popular in Israel. Like you you will see people fly it a lot, and there's a lot of sentiment around it in Israel, like a patriotic sentiment. And it's simpler than the United States flag, so some might see it as boring, but to me, I see it as more elegant aesthetically, probably because it's a bit simpler. But it's still a little bit unique in the way that it's constructed, the design of Israel's flag. So personally, I like the Israeli flag far better than the United States flag. And I also do have a um, personal sort of interest with the state of Israel. I love Hebrew. I love the Jewish people. I love Israeli culture. I want to uh, maybe even live there but or study there. Who knows? But honestly, just the Israeli flag, even with all the connotations around it and the simplicity of it, it's... It's better to me than the U.S., but it still has a lot of that same sentiment that Americans have for the American flag, but Jews and Israeli have for the Israeli flag, you know? So it's it's interesting how that kind of works. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know if it's, I'm just rambling or whatever. But... No, no, no. That's half the show is rambling. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. But Yeah. I mean, I feel like the Israeli flag overall, just as an example, works better than the American flag, especially since it has a more elegant and unique design. The American flag is just five pointed stars and stripes. Yeah. So, so are you, you thinking so that your, your underrated and overrated? Is the Israeli underrated 
and US I don't. Over? I don't think the Israeli flag is necessarily underrated. Like it's controversial, and a lot of people don't like it. But that's mainly because of political reasons. I've seen a lot of people who say they really do like the aesthetics of the Israeli flag. Um, as for like if like underrated flag. I'm not gonna go over the second Spanish Republic flag again. I think it's underrated because a lot of people don't know about <laughs> it. But we already talked about it. Yeah. Underrated flag. Let me look at the bunting, the string of flags I have on my ceiling up here. Oh wow, you got more than I do. Or at least more <laughs> concentrated. Yeah. Um I'm trying to look at the examples above. I really honestly like the flag of the Islamic Republic of Abbasque. Of Afghanistan, whoops. Um, I don't know. I like I like it. The um, Suriname flag is not very talked about. It is uh, not. I absolutely love the Suriname flag. It's one of my favorites, personally. Yeah, I've got it up like right over here. It's yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, the Trinidad and Tobago flag. Wait, my um, I also really like that one up I, over yeah, there. Yeah, I see it there next to Palestine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Tajikistan, there's a lot of underrated flags in my opinion, but if I were to pick one to talk about... Pick one. I might have to go with Suriname, honestly. Okay. The colors are, the colors are aesthetically pleasing, it's, it's a nice yeah. design, it, it evokes a sort of South American vibe to it. I, I like it. It's, it's a nice flag. It's, it makes me feel comfortable and warm. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's interesting. And like, I don't know if the Suriname flag has even ever come up on this show, like whether it's overrated, underrated, like not rated, like, I don't think it's come up like at all, almost <laughs> ever. Um, but yeah, it's like a, I, there's like, you know, it follows all the rules. It has what, three colors, you know, not counting white and gold. Um, yeah. I guess two, if you're not counting either of them, but <laughs> three, if you count gold, um, it's like, you know, everything's fembriated where it should be like, yeah, the gold doesn't touch the white. It almost does, but it doesn't quite. Like, yeah, I don't know. even yeah, then, it... like, I'm kind of like a a bit of like a non-traditionalist when it comes to like you know flags because and flag sure, yeah, rules. yeah, fair. Because like fair. a lot of people take flag rules way too seriously, and I respect Ted K of Nava and the Good Flag Back to Bad Flag booklet, but some people like follow it so religiously, and everything just ends up looking corporate or like bland. Like uh, yeah. flags, like to, flag, like Turme Turkmenistan. Who cares if a child can't draw? Most children don't even draw flags. Much. Yes. So like, no, who agree. cares? It's a cool flag. It looks nice. I love Turkmenistan's flag. Or Iran. Yeah, no. Like Iran, the patterns on the bands are. Yeah. It's Allahu Akbar, I believe, where uh, God is the Greatest, written twenty-two times. There's a small yeah. meaning behind it. It's, yeah. It's, it's a date. I mean, I've got like uh, in the background here for the viewers, I've got Kazakhstan, which has like one of the more complicated. I mean, maybe not as yeah. complicated as Turkmenistan, but yeah, uh, Belarus you know, for the hoist side there. Belarus too, which I have the um, yeah the SSR flag here, but it's still very similar to the um, yeah current just the flag of Belarus. Red and white the, pattern, the pattern's hard to draw, but it's really aesthetically pleasing, and I think that's what we should shoot for when we design flags: make it look nice. It doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be I, boring I you, like, or bland or simple. You know, make it look nice at least. The rules are good, but they shouldn't be the end all be all. Yeah, exactly. Like, in my opinion. Yeah, because here, Navas flag, very simple, very simplistic, very basic. Still looks very nice and iconic. Yep. Um, Maldives, Israel, same thing. But something like um, Kazakhstan, very, very aesthetically pleasing. And personally, even though I think it's a weird flag, the um, most serene republic or whatever of the Vatican, that super complicated, it almost looks like a fresco yeah. flag, you know? But it's, to me, it's beautiful. It's a work of art. The Vatican one? The I mean, yeah. not the Vatican, the Venice. Venice. Venice, okay. Venice. I, was I don't know. Most serene, I, I don't think I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Most serene Republic of Venice, not Vatican. Oh my Vatican. god, yeah, that one is incredibly complicated. And there's so many different, like, quote unquote, like, versions of it, you know, depending yeah. on who you ask. Uh, the lion's carrying a different thing. He's either like a cross or a scepter, or, uh, you know, some of these pictures are different, these places. But, like, generally speaking, yeah, it is incredibly complicated. It's got like six. You know, little, I don't know what you even call them, like streamers coming out the end. Probably you can call them streamers, yeah. 
They, they might even. Yeah, I think that's the original Italian is streamare. Um, I made that up, but uh, you know, streamare. yeah, it's a fun flag for sure. Like, I yeah. love like some of my favorite ones that I own are my like weird Scandinavian ones that like I have a, a herring salad Sweden one that's like got a swallowtail. I have a herring salad Norwegian one that's got like a trident kind of thing coming out the end. Um, those are some of my favorites. And like Venice is like Venice checks like all those boxes pretty much. Yeah, it's all the it breaks all the rules of the yeah. flag design, but still looks cool, and I like that. It is wild, yeah. Yeah, and like, have you seen the um like to, to like briefly diverge a little bit, but like the I think it's the Italian naval jack, and it's got like it's quartered, and it's got like yeah, I think it's uh it's the arms one of, of the, four like, regions. The top, like the one that's like pretty much in Canton, I think, is the Venice lion. And then there's like a cross, a couple other cross, or there's like a couple crosses, and then I forget what the other quarter is. But I know, I know the Italian uh, civil and naval ensign; they're very similar. Um, they one of them just has a crown on it, but um, yeah, I don't remember which one I'm thinking of. Even it's probably a, like too specific one to think of right now. But the, I mean, the Italian naval ensign; I know, I know which one it is. It's just I'm trying to remember the details of the coat of arms. It's very fuzzy. I kind of I have an idea of it. Okay, yeah, the naval flag I'm looking at, it has the, like, encanter, you know, top left. It's got the Venice uh, lion with the sword and his, like, other paw on the Bible. Top right, I guess, is, I don't remember what the, it looks like the Savoy cross or the St. George's cross. Uh, red on white. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the other two are. There's the Venetian. I don't know if that one is Genoa or Milan, the one in the cross that looks like England. The one on the bottom left. Yeah, okay. Genoa is the red cross on white. Bottom left is Pisa. Yeah, same with Milan. But yeah, Milan is also a white background with a red cross. Or Oh, clockwise from top left. Okay, yeah. Pisa is the one at the bottom right. And then Amalfi is the one with blue. Yeah. And here in the description on Wikipedia, it's the line of St. Mark from the Republic of Venice. The red cross, white background is Republic of Genoa. The Maltese cross is the one is the the third card on the bottom left, and then the Republic of Pisa. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. It is very cool. Anyway, yeah, that that. Uh... Oh man, I'm accidentally closing all my windows, but yeah, that Venetian <laughs> one is is wild. Yeah, I do like that. All right, so we went through. Um... We went through your over and underrated. We went through what got you into flags and your favorite. So let's get into right. kind of the main section of the show here. We wanted to talk about some flags from around where you are at. So Florida, let's, uh, you want to start macro and kind of zoom in from there. Your show. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go over the flag of Florida first. I, I think I've briefly, I may have touched on this in one of the, episodes i did with ian sharp i think maybe in the confederate flag episode but even then barely uh, right. or flags of the former confederacy but i don't think i've really gotten into this one hardly at all so like if you want to take the reins on this go ahead and give us a description especially for the listeners and then uh let's launch into it well the flag of florida which is reminiscent of the flag of alabama except the salt tire is thicker and it has a seal on it um, the origins of the Florida flag, I'm not entirely sure on, but I believe they're debated. Like, whether or not it's inspired by the uh, Confederate Naval Jack, or the Confederate Cross flag that we all know, or the Cross of Burgundy, which I believe is the more likely choice. I think given so, too. This, given the Spanish colonization of Florida, uh, I believe it has more ties. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is actually based off of the Cross of Burgundy, although some might associate it with the Confederacy. But, yeah, I think so. Uh, Either way, not the best, but, you know. Um, then there's the seal of the state of Florida, which on its own, I personally really like. I think it looks really nice. Right, again, but on its on own. Flag, yeah, on its own. But on the flag, I think... it's it's The flag of Florida is a very iconic symbol. It has a lot of pride surrounding it, especially among more right-wing individuals here in the state. Um, I've seen plenty of people fly it in the, you know, in the January 6th riots. People from Florida had their flag Right. Really? Kind of like insurrection. Yeah, I see, I saw some Florida flags. There's a bunch of other flags, you know, South Vietnam and 
I yeah, sorry, I don't mean to butt in like when we're still in the describing stage, but I don't really think of Florida's as iconic. I, I don't think of many people outside the state of Florida as knowing what this flag even is. When within Florida, it's kind of like a it's it's kind of like a popular symbol in a way. Like I've seen a lot of a lot of pickup trucks with like a sticker with the Florida outline and the flag, or shirts or caps with the Florida flag or a Florida flag design. A right. lot, like, and they're almost all you know, white. Sure. <laughs> but um. Uh, you know, like the typical redneck, whatever. But it's definitely a cultural symbol, at least to some extent here in Florida. The mm -hmm. further west or south you go, the more you'll see it. Like here in Miami, you won't see it as much. At the very least, the shirts or hats, but you will maybe see a sticker. But gotcha. it's it's definitely a very, um, it's an interesting flag. It's popular among the people who support, you know, DeSantis and the Republican government. And, but it's also very much not liked by people who, um, who are more democratic or further to the left. Or who but have also, good taste in flags. Yeah, I was going to get to that. <laughs> aside from politics, aside from politics, yeah. there's the aesthetic aspect of it, yeah. which is what we're supposed to be talking about. I'm not right. going to make this a political <laughs> No, no, no. All but, of uh, it, really. Yeah. It's just the flag itself. I don't know how to feel about it. I kind of like it, but I mostly hate it. No, and that's fair. That's like a lot of why I wanted to have you and uh, I'm sure I'll eventually have other Floridians on here to talk about it, among other yeah. things, too. But like, yeah, I I, as a Tennessean and, uh, you know, so therefore a Southerner, but like we really only go to Florida like for vacation. And even then, like we usually go to like South Carolina or somewhere that's like just less crowded, I guess. I don't know. The yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I've never really had too much of an opinion on Florida's flag until I started, you know, kind of studying it more, being a little bit more of a Vex head and, uh, you know, getting into the nitty gritty and, and, and realizing like the past versions of it too. Like, I think it, it used to have a different seal on it. Well, so Florida used to have a different seal. In other words, uh, yeah. that was on the flag that was, I think, like basically a simplified, well, I don't know if simplified is the best word, but like fewer colors Stylized. Like, it's a different style. than the current one. Yeah. Yeah, the one the, the the flag of Florida up until the eighties um, had a, a bit of a different seal. Yeah, it was based the one we have now is based on that, and all Florida seals that we've had for the last like hundred years or so, or right? Long, yeah, have have been inspired by the previous, or at least modeled after the previous, but they're in different styles. The one in the eighties is more like a paint. In the eighties is more like a painting, and then the one from nineteen oh one is really a painting on a white background. That's all that flag was. And the oh, flag yeah, during the Confederate, the flag during the Confederacy, was um, I believe it was like, like it was like the stars and bars, but instead of a canton, it was like a vertical bar with the seal on it, like an oval seal. But the seal was very different from. I do see that one. Yeah, sixty-one to sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Florida flag has certainly changed a lot. Uh, certainly not for the better <laughs> aesthetically. <laughs> I'll, um, I mean. Yeah, it's definitely better than what we used to have. But. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it is. It is definitely better than the one from the 1860s. Uh, yeah, either sure. of the ones from the 1860s. Because the one before that, there's one like I'm seeing on Wikipedia anyway, just before that, that pretty much looks like Liberia with a different number of stripes. And then, like yeah. you said, yeah, there's one with just the state seal. Then there's the state seal, but like a very illustrated version. Then yeah, yeah. you said the, the one up until the 80s. I honestly, I think I kind of prefer the one that was around from 1900 to 85 to the one that is now. I, I like it a little bit better. Yeah. Although, I don't know, because the current flag of Florida, like aesthetically, it's been what I've known the whole my whole life. It's been what we've all seen growing up here in this yeah. state. Yeah, for sure. So, uh yeah, one of the things that like, you know, I'm interested in, the listeners and viewers are interested in is like, you know, how it's actually used. And so you said uh circling back on that basically, like you said it's it's more or less used by conservative folks and you see a lot of it on bumper stickers like maybe in the state outline. You see a lot of Florida doesn't mandate um front license plates, right? No, it does. At least so yeah, you can have does, like so I I assume you see a lot of like front license plates that are the Florida flag. Yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I see American flags. Sometimes I see European license plates. Is it the kind of thing where you can assume somebody's politics based off it, though? Because I don't find that necessarily with the Tennessee one. 
For sure. Here in Florida, you if you okay. see somebody, if you see somebody with a Florida flag bumper sticker or whatever, they're more likely to be like redneck okay. or conservative. Yeah, the Florida flag is um, definitely got some political and cultural connotations in a similar okay, so it's more like the U.S. You know? It's more like if you see like a bumper sticker, a front license plate, whatever, you are you going to assume they're like a DeSantis kind of supporter, yes. like maybe a more conservative? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of the same thing with the U.S. flag as well. People who fly oh, the sure. flag, obviously depending on where you are, because if you're like in New York State, although even in New York State there's a lot of Republicans, but um, if you're like in a more democratic city, they're more likely to be like the typical like neoliberal um Democrats like Bernie Bros or whatever, but everywhere else it's like they are hardline Republican and they have very questionable beliefs kind of thing. Right. Gotcha. And the more farmland you see, the more questionable it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Like <laughs> what? Like Northern Florida, I guess. But Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's weird. Cause like the Tennessee one isn't necessarily like that. And I think that may be a function of us, in my opinion, having one of the better or best state flags is like, I think here in Tennessee, people just like the design and like, yeah. I will say probably 75% of those that have it as a, uh, a front license plate, especially are conservative, but like a good 25% is not like, yeah, is, is, is definitely not like is probably pretty left wing, just yeah. really likes Tennessee really likes what, you know, Tennessee could be and, mm -hmm. uh, and likes the design, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I went to Tennessee last year, I went to uh, Gatlinburg on the little yeah. mountain where the where the um, the bridge is. Yep. That, uh, and a there's a little or whatever. Yeah, there's a gift shop there, and they had a bunch of stickers. They had a, like a roundel. Like, it looked like an Air Force roundel, but it was like red outline, blue uh, um, blue inside with three stars. Yep. And it, it almost looks like something if Tennessee would have its own Air Force. I have that, that on the car. That yeah, I mean not that exact bumper sticker, but pretty much that exact bumper sticker. Yeah, I have it on my laptop, and I also have the flag of Tennessee on my laptop. It's definitely a very popular symbol there. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, here flag. in Florida, it's more <laughs> political because most people logically would not really like the design. I hope. But, yeah. Right. Gotcha. All right, so that's Florida, and our you know various thoughts on it. So yeah. you live more specifically in and around Miami, though. Yes. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the Miami flag, which you can explain better to us, but for listeners and viewers, it looks a bit like the flag of India. Yeah. Orange um, on top. Yeah. How would you describe middle. it separately from that? The flag of Miami is not actually very well known in Miami. It's not a cultural symbol. The colors are like the flat, like the colors of university of Miami, UM. Uh, I believe come from the flag of Miami. I don't know if it's vice versa, but the no, colors are the same. Yeah. Uh, green, white, and orange, or orange, white, and green in that order, are kind of the colors of Miami. Um, they're that they're very heavily associated with Miami, and just overall, I mean, I don't know. The colors themselves are more of a symbolic icon of the city than the flag itself. Um, Funny enough, the flag of Miami is much better than a lot of city flags, in my personal opinion. It's not like a seal on the bed sheet, like the current flag of Evansville, which I hope, which is slated to change soon. Should just spit everywhere. Which is slated to change soon because Evansville, Indiana, is holding a flag referendum, not a vote to change it. Um, there's the flag of Boston, you know, but Miami is at least more unique. Um, it's very similar to India, though. It's like if you took India, you lighten the colors a little bit and you slap the Miami seal on it. Yeah. Uh, it's not the most creative, but it's certainly better than whatever the hell Boston's flag is. Yes. Yeah. As someone who went to school in Boston, yeah, that flag is a nightmare. Or not even a nightmare. It's just like not worth it, thinking about, really. It's forgettable. Yeah. But um, personally, I really like the flag of Miami. I think the seal could be done away with and changed, but I feel like the tri-band should be kept, at least to a certain extent. Um, I feel like it definitely does evoke a very Miami feel, at least when you go towards the beach in the downtown area, because yeah. that's where the flag is mainly flown. Because the city of Miami is not that big, like the this, like the, the 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 metropolitan area is huge, but the city itself is not very big. 
that's where the flag is mainly flown. Um, city and the different cities like Doral or South Beach or Hialeah, their flags are not very prevalent either. Would you say Hylia? Hialeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like Zelda, and I was like, never mind. <laughs> no, no, Hialeah. The Hialeah, I've heard of, and I, I know how to spell that one. H I A Leah. Yeah, it's um, Hialeah's flag is really ugly. Yeah. But... Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, um, same as the Florida flag. Like, that is one thing that I always ask about. You know, not just like what does it look like, but like in function, how does it work? And you said it's mostly just kind of in the city. Yeah, it's not really well known. Nobody really knows. Yeah, that. yeah. And does it have any like kind of um, I don't know any like how the Florida flag you said has like a little bit of political baggage in that it kind of generally means you're probably a little bit more right leaning. Does this one have any such kind of like connotations like that, or is this one pretty? just po politics free in that sense um the flag of miami it doesn't really have any political connotations nobody even really knows it exists so it's not really okay. it's not it's not a big deal here in the city of miami Fair. the colors are but they don't those don't even have political connotations they're more like sport connotations right yeah yeah because yeah, un is known for its sports yeah yeah Football. So you can't like automatically infer anything from somebody who has a Miami flag hanging no. from the back of their truck or on the front license plate or whatever. You're just like, well, they, they like Miami. Yeah. Most people probably wouldn't even know that is the Miami flag. They would just see it and just don't even care. Yeah, that's fair. Like, um, I know we didn't even plan on talking about this, but is, so I've seen, and like anybody who's on Reddit enough has seen the flag of little Havana. You know that one, right? Yeah. Is oh, that yeah. in Miami or around Miami? Calle Ocho, yeah. Miami, that's where Little Havana is here in Miami. Yeah, it's for sure just a meme, at least in the online community. But here in Miami, nobody even really knows it exists. Okay, so it's not like... <laughs> okay. So it's more like online people who are like... Who found something yeah. that was funny and wanted to spread it around. Yeah, it became more of a meme in the Vexed community than in the actual Miami community. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was curious about that because, like, I was like, man, this, like, this flag, you know, it really has it all. <laughs> and yeah. by has it all, I mean it has entirely too much going on on it. it. It looks more like a Domino's table cover than an actual flag. To be it honest. does. Yeah, it looks like something you would see in, like, a like a Cuban restaurant or something, like, as the, like, table itself almost or something. <sighs> All right. So yeah, there was, before we get into your uh, flag collection, which I definitely want to hit, there was one more Florida slash Florida adjacent flag that I wanted to make sure we got to. And that is the flag of the Conk Republic. Now, um, you can probably explain better than I can uh, what exactly the, hey, there you go. What exactly is the Conk Republic? Why does it have its own flag? And uh, give us like a little bit of background detail on that and obviously this is where danny's video and audio cut out so you're not going to get that but the gist of it from what i remember and have looked up is there are bridges down to key west and on those bridges there are checkpoints and yeah i'll let danny take it from here this checkpoint would slow traffic down really bad it would it would discourage tourism and it actually hurt I believe the Key West and the Keys economy, uh, and the, the the people in Key West were not happy about it at all sure. because and it it also hurt tourism. You know, people weren't buying things and the economy was being hurt. So I think it was the mayor of Key West at the time. Um, he decided to secede basically on the grounds that you know the united states government is treating us like we're another country we're gonna be another country so that happened and for about six to eight months that's the about the duration of the actual independence movement period um that's when all the drama went down and somebody hit a coast guard sailor or something over the head with a um with get this a stale piece of cuban bread <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing about the Conk Republic is that it was not entirely serious. It had some merit behind right. its secession, but the motto, yeah. 
the motto of the Conk Republic, um, hold on, I don't quite remember it word for word, but the motto, I'm searching it up. Shoot. Yeah, here we go. There's actually two models. The we seceded where others failed, but the one that's uh, kind of more well-known, I think, is the mitigation of world tension through the exercise of humor. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's so, the one that caught on more because the other one's more catchy, but sure. <laughs> yeah, but I it's, it's definitely not a, a catchy model, but it's... It's very descriptive of what the Conk Republic is. I do, and, yeah. I do like a little humor, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of the Conk Republic was kind of not serious and still isn't. It's more like a cultural thing now than an actual independence movement. Sure, yeah. But, uh, I mean, so it's really just a micronation. That's what the Conk Republic is now. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the story of the Conk Republic is honestly wild. I really find it funny. Um, here you can even see on the flag it says um, Key West on it. The 1828, I don't exactly remember the, the, the meaning. I searched it up once, but I kind of forgot. There's the crux and the um, it's the constellation, the Northern Cross. I forgot the name. But you can see both the Southern Cross and the Northern Cross here. That's ironically, I mean. yeah, ironically, it's in the Northern Hemisphere. I don't know why it has a crux. But... Huh. The flag is a very cultural symbol now. Yeah, I, like, so... Again, like going back to like usage, how is that one used? Is it used by more like anti-government types or is it kind of like still very tongue in cheek, like haha, funny, like it's it's like a cultural icon, you know, like okay. in the keys, it's part of keys history. It's a very big part of the history of the history of the keys and the Florida keys and to this day, it remains a very popular symbol throughout the entire Keys, not just Key West anymore. It expanded. Sure. They, they expanded their territory, you could say. And yeah. each year on April 23rd, yeah, which is their Independence Day, they hold uh, ceremonies, an Independence Day ceremonies with um, like a homemade uh, go like cart racing thing. We can like race anything, like shopping carts or whatever, down okay. the street of Key West. I'm into it. Um, there's, uh, I think, even a, a pride thing. There's um, the battle of the, the war for independence, you could say, where they actually, I believe, get an actual Coast Guard ship to come over and they shoot water cannons and blanks from actual cannons. And it's just a big fun water fight. It's, it's, it's a big celebration. And I haven't gone to it, but I want to. Yeah. Actually, last, last year was their 40th independence. I wish I could go, but I, I could have gone, but I couldn't. Uh, right yeah i guess it was yeah shoot that would be so much fun yeah i i absolutely have to go one day like, before i turn 18 but yeah because yeah, when i turn 18 i'm probably getting the hell out of the u.s for college <laughs> yeah yeah so um, it's uh so it's like it's a good time flag it's yes like, it's like, absolutely there's no here. there's no political connotations behind this flag like whatsoever yes yeah. Everyone flies it. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter what your political beliefs are. You, this is a fun flag, and it's a, it's a symbol of cultural and just Key West and just the Florida Keys history. It's yeah, honestly, that's awesome. Uh, I I love yeah. a flag like that. That you know is just like it almost seems like you know if like uh, Jimmy Buffett's like Margaritaville had a flag, it would be like <laughs> it would yeah. have at least similar connotations and probably similar design to that one. Pretty much, yeah. Like, hey, look, leave your politics at the door. We're all just trying to have a good time. Yeah. Drink margaritas, whatever, like hang out, chill For sure. on the beach type of thing. Yeah. yeah Don't, like, it's basically like a flag show. of like not taking anything too seriously. Exactly. That's basically which, what this flag is. Yeah, which I can definitely get behind that. For sure. Yeah. Right yeah. on, dude. Yeah. All right. So cool. So those are your Florida flags. And Given that you've got that one on a, a little poll there, and uh, yes. we wanted to get into your collection here, are most of your, let's go ahead and actually kind of transition into that. So your collection of flags um, yes. is from what I gather anyway, from talking to you online and stuff, uh, I gather is a little different than my collection of flags, which are mostly these like five by threes here. Yeah. That, you know, you could fly, hang, whatever. Yours are, I think, more of that variety. 
um, and you probably have more of them as a result. So talk to us yeah. kind of about um, like, I, I want to know how you, especially since you are what, 16, right? Yes, I'm 16. Yeah, so you are young. How did you get into vexillology at such a young age? And secondarily, like, how did you amass such a collection? Because your collection is bigger than mine. How did you amass yeah. such a collection in the, I'm sure, short time that you did? Well, I've only been collecting flags for almost three years. Actually, I think three years at this point. But okay. um, my collection started off because, like, my family used to run a daycare. And when it shut down, we had some leftover flags from Hispanic Heritage Month. They had, and there was um, the U.S., Brazil, for some reason. Um, and these were all three by five flags. They're uh, the U.S., Brazil, okay. uh, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Panama, um, uh, Puerto Rico, and El Salvador. Uh, those are the flags that came. Oh, and Mexico. Um, those are the flags that came. That's kind of what started off my collection. Before that, I only had this little Panamanian flag. This one here I've had since I was a baby. Okay. And but were you, were you, so like, were you interested in flags, like just off the strength of the Panamanian or like before all this started or did this get you started into flags? Actually, my, what got me started into flags was my interest in the American Civil War, hence the 69th New York and 20th Maine regimental flags that I mentioned earlier. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so that interest started, and then I later got the opportunity to get more flags from the unfortunate closing of my parents' daycare. Sure, yeah. Um, and then from there, I got it through different ways. I either bought them, or my therapist would gift them to me once a week. Um, Very cool. Uh, or Not I typical. could travel. <laughs> yeah, I could also travel. And get flags. That's how I got my um, 12 by 12 inch flag of Bern, Switzerland. Although I didn't even go to Bern, actually. But I did go to Geneva. I have a 12 by 12 flag of Geneva as well. I should say nice. smaller than that. But, yeah. um, those are actually kind of hard to find, like online. You don't, you really won't find a 12 by 12 square flag of um, Geneva. Yeah, I'd or... imagine. I mean, I'm just curious, like, to, um, like, what starts a young person like down the vexillology path and like then what kind of like not just like you know once you're started what gets you into being a collector at that age because like i'm a collector now but i'm also in my 30s but yeah so for like millennials like for me you know growing up in the 90s it was a lot harder to go on ebay and find flags or go on you know it was pretty much ebay that was pretty much your one shot yeah uh, maybe amazon but yeah. Amazon was just selling books in, in the late 90s. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's and, how they started um, off. Yeah, I mean, I remember, like, the first flag, like, not to go on too much of a tangent, but the first flag that I actually did buy was in Florida, hmm. uh, was in Orlando, specifically at Epcot in Disney, and it was the uh, Norwegian flag. No kidding. Because for for whatever reason, we were doing a fifth grade, this would have been, like, 97, 98, we were doing a fifth grade... Uh, project on a country that wasn't our own right and i either picked norway or got like assigned norway i can't remember but i remember going down to epcot and being so excited that they had a norway exhibit and getting a little like norwegian flag that i still have lord knows where but somewhere yeah um but yeah that was like at the time that was like exciting i got like one flag and now you're getting like you're going online and you're like all right i'm getting five from here five from here like you got like places yeah, and a lot of my flags that I've been collecting recently are more rare and obscure and hard to get. Yes. Which is something that I, I feel like is a um, notable characteristic of mine. Like, I don't like to brag or, you know, um, no, but lift I mean, myself yeah. up. But I feel like I'm really good at getting the flags that you cannot find anymore. Like, yeah. for well, example... If you don't want to lift yourself up, let us lift you up. <laughs> you are incredible at collecting these things and you find like things like, and, and post them in our discord, like stuff that like you've quizzed me or like, you know, quiz the discord. And I've been like, I have no idea what flying that is. It yeah. looks really cool. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, like, again, like, you know, I've got 20, 19 years on you age wise. Yeah. And I have no idea what these are. Yeah. Like for example, <laughs> here I have the people's Republic of the Congo and uh, I believe this is a, uh, Kate Verd when it was a Marxist Leninist state. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, this so is, I didn't even know that it ever was a Marxist Leninist. Yeah, this is the flag of Cape Verde or Cabo Verde or whatever uh, when it was communist, and it was aligned with Guinea Bissau. Hence the similarity with the flag of Guinea Bissau, which I believe I was going to say it looked more like that than the current flag of Cabo Verde. Yeah. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the liberation movement for Guinea Bissau was also in Cape Verde because of the proximity. I would imagine, yeah. And they were almost actually going to be part of. Guinea Bissau, if I'm not mistaken, when they gained independence in 1975. But they split off for I don't know what reason. But they both speak Portuguese, right? Yes, they were both uh, Portuguese colonies. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, I pride myself in my ability to find the really rare and obscure flags. Yeah, so I, I was going to ask, so like um, from one collector to another, so like what do you look for? when you're looking for these rare ones because i know it's not as simple as just going on somewhere and typing rare flags or maybe it is yeah. but i assume like you kind of have something in mind of like all right i would like to get one from this place in this era or do you really kind of just go on and search like what's the wildest flag that i can get today well the wild searching that up is a bit it's not going to get you it's not going to yield many results you kind of well, have sure, to do your yeah, you're gonna have to do your own digging like right CRW flags uh, from Flag of the World has a good selection. They I found a flag of Tel Aviv and uh, Israel, a little stick uh -huh. one, like one of these, and I might get it. I'll see. But it's still a, like a bit of a search. I was lucky to find um, a bit of a disgusting flag in the sense of its uh, context. Uh, let me see if I have it here somewhere. I think uh, in this pile of flags. <laughs> um, or did it end up in the other one? one? Might have ended up in the other one. I'm just trying to guess what this disgusting flag could possibly be. Oh, you'll you'll I know when you see it. You'll know when you see it. I assume it's politically odious. I am I gonna have to like censor it on the screen? Oh no no not at all. It's um you don't have to censor it. It's just when you see it, you'll be like uh mm. yeah, like just. It doesn't have any like specific design element that sets it apart as you know disgusting. It's just uh, here it is. Okay, that is what uh, like Dem democratic Kampuchea, Kampuchea Pol Pot's regime. Cambodia. Yeah, Khmer Rouge. Yeah. This was their flag. Uh, I was lucky enough. They actually have a bundle of these on Amazon. Like this specific one, I was lucky to find that. But I already right. have this and so one. That is a, what, stylized Angkor Wat. Yes, it is a stylized Angkor in gold, Wat. In gold. On a red. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like so it looks very, uh, to uh, listeners who aren't viewing this, it looks very similar to the current Vietnam flag, but instead of the star, it's a stylized Angkor Wat in the middle. Same colors, all that. And, uh, you know, same kind of... Uh, I don't know, political tradition, I guess, that it comes out of, too. So Yeah, it was supposed to be communist, but even the communists hit them. I mean, it hell, Vietnam invaded them. It was to be them. a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, but it, uh, no, it was pretty bad. By the way, Flag of Man, I found it. We were talking about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right on. But yes, uh, back to my collection, I mean, and the rarity and obscurity. Really, you just have to dig. You have to know where. Yeah, you need to have connections. Okay. Um. You, like you just need to find people really okay yeah because that is one of the things i was going to ask is you know for our listeners viewers etc who are interested in collecting all these you know uh rare weird kind of flags if you will um yeah. like you got to have connections but how do you make those connections you just kind of like trial and error you just look around a lot different places yeah. or you really just have to meet people online or get lucky. Really, it's really a matter of luck because you're not gonna be guaranteed to find it. Like I'm, I think I'm really lucky that I managed to find find something like you know this, the the flag of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. Yeah, I was gonna say that's one I. Islamic knew. State of Afghanistan. Barely know. In 1992. Yeah. yeah, that one is very rare. I guess some of these. Let's, some of these, I'm surprised they even. I don't know. Made them, yeah. Yeah, made them. Like, I guess. So they, they yeah. don't seem like they were around long enough for anybody to have made them, but maybe somebody went back and was like, all right. Yeah. Uh, you can easily find... I know a website where you can find really rare flags, like really, really hard to find ones, but they're not originals. They're like modern print rep like reproductions. 
Gotcha. Uh, Fion Shop, F Y O N, Fion Shop. They have, yeah. uh, and they're mostly like big selections. They're not like these, the four by six inches. They're, yeah, yeah. You can select the size, but they're mainly like the big ones with grommets. Um, so if you want something like that, go. You can search there, but you're not going to get anything like these old vintage ones. Right. Um, but the, if you do want these old vintage ones, those are where you have to talk to collectors and sellers. You can't find them in shops anymore. And if okay. you do, they're not. They're like on clearance or they're not even listed. As was the case with um, when I went to a flag store in North Miami. They had, for example, this um, Northern Alliance flag, which is similar to the Islamic State flag. Yep, yep. Yeah, um, I know that one. They had this, but it wasn't listed in their cat in their catalog. And it was I in fact that, on clearance. Like Afghanistan one that has like kind of the, I mean, this is the Soviet one, but like it has like the sheaths and the little like ribbons around it. Like very, yeah. very similar. And very similar yeah, yeah, yeah. to the DDR flag yeah. as well. Uh, the, oh yeah, the German Democratic East flag? German, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the uh, German yeah, honestly, flag colored ribbons around the sides, yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Like here with the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan flag, you can, you can see the printed representation of that. Yeah, the yeah, the flags around, around the, the side, like the yeah, yeah, the like ribbons right around right. the uh, wheat or whatever the yeah, yeah the sheaves of wheat or whatever the hell they are, yeah, yeah, I mean, something like that. No, so yeah. all right, so like, do you place emphasis on um, getting ones that were made during the time period that's relevant for that, or do you is it just as good to get one that's like a reprint for you personally? It's it's preferable to get something older, but if if what I have to settle for is a reproduction, I'm perfectly okay with it. Is it? I guess like my other question, like kind of like um, because that seems correct. I mean, that seems like almost obvious. But is it like cost prohibitive sometimes to get ones that are not reproductions? Like, is it insanely like? Do you ever come across ones that are you know made in the time period, but they're also like two hundred bucks or something? It really depends on the size, and I typically don't go for the ones that are like you know big, because right. like the, the big vintage ones are expensive. Sure, yeah. But like the mini ones, they're on the contrary cheaper than what they probably would be worth if they were made today okay. in that style. Like I got, um, for example, this a bundle of different flags, but this was included the uh, Kazakh SSR flag. It sure is. I got it for a dollar and fifty each. Okay. Yeah, there's shipping. To get prices there's like that, or no, no, I got like like twenty five, almost thirty flags for thirty dollars plus five dollars shipping. Amazing deal, plus a bunch of extra free stuff that the guy I got it from sent, including um this flag. Let me find it. It should be in here. I should find it out really quickly. Um, better, 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 better. Here it is. The flag, the former flag of the city of Orlando. It's better printed on the other side. Oh yeah, he sent this one for free, so I yeah. got a bunch of bonus stuff. So you just gotta get lucky, really. Gotcha. Yeah, that is fascinating because, like, I've never really focused on the stick ones. Like, I've only really gotten them from you know, like friends of the show. Like, can kind of viewers can see in the yeah. background, you know, the Hadnasani one and the Keystone and a few other ones. But um, yeah, yeah, I I had never really thought about focusing on flags like that, but it does seem more. I guess cost effective for one. Yeah, two, depending like, on the size. Get, like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you can get a lot of cool, a lot of cool ones, like very cool flags like that. Yeah, and I happen to get, and this is emphasis on the luck part. <laughs> um, I got lucky because I sort of know the mayor of my particular city uh, in Doral, Florida. We've been in contact. We've met in person. We've talked before. She's a fantastic person. And let me tell you about a couple of flags that I actually own. These are the three, probably my personal favorite ones that I own off of like the actual value of it. There is the, um, um, there's, okay, so back in Christmas on Noche Buena, uh, the day before Christmas at night, it's, it's, it's a Hispanic celebration. It's, um, we, we met up with my godfather here in Miami. He is. He works for Essex County in New Jersey. Um, I'm not going to say what he does because I don't want to dox myself. But he sure. works for the county. Yeah, and he got me the flag 
of that county of Essex County, New Jersey, which has got to be pretty rare. I would imagine. Oh, like I'm probably the only person in the state of Florida who owns it. Yeah. There are certain ones like that, that it's like only city officials like would have any reason to even have. That's so, like, basically what it is. Them, like for the public, they print them for no, no, they don't. office desks. And that's pretty Mine, much it. The one that he gave me wasn't even printed. It was sewn together. Ah. It was like, and not only that, it had the gold fringe around it. So it was like an it's an official government made flag. Fancy. Yeah, and I got it for free, free of charge. It was a Christmas yeah. gift. So and another one that his wife gave me um is a one of a kind thing. It was a 48 star vintage American flag from 1958 that flew over the capital of the United States. Nice. Yeah. That yeah. one is I was so impressed. And it came with a letter of certification that made it official yeah. from the government itself. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the real thing. Yeah. That's so interesting. It's, it's like, it's very interesting to talk to a collector who collects differently than I do. And like, I talk about it in the discord and occasionally on Twitter uh, from time to time, but like, that's part of what fascinates me so much about this hobby and this like um, field of study is that there's so yeah. many of us doing it in our own way. Like, you know, I collect these five by threes, but I don't even really, I have sort of a rhyme and reason for which ones I get. Um, mm -hmm. You collect those and you have like connects that can get you these other cool ones. Um, yeah, I, I get, I get anything really. I don't, I know, like, I don't limit like, myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't want to limit myself either. It's just like, I go out and I search for certain types, but if I then find a certain, you know, if I find a smaller one, that's something that I've never seen, never had, like the, the Haudenosaunee one here <laughs> that Eric sent me. I would never have gotten like a stick version of that anyway. Like he's, he was like, I had to go to their reservation basically uh, just outside Syracuse, New York to get that. Hmm. And um, yeah, it's so cool. Like it's, that's part of what I love about this hobby and this, like, like I said, field of study is that yeah. everybody kind of does it their own way. And it's oh, so cool sure. to see like young people like yourself, um, like making it your own and doing your own thing. And just like, honestly, to be honest, like being interested in, in it in the first place is, is, right. is cool enough. Um, but to see everybody kind of doing their own thing with it is endlessly fascinating to me. It really because is. We all do honestly. it different. Um, but we yeah, all kind of sure. come back to the same place at the end of the day, which is cool too. Yeah. Cause we all share the same interest. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, let's um real quick before we wrap up, do you have any like weird ones that you might be able to like quiz me on? Maybe make me look like a fool. I didn't have a game prepared for you, so I was wondering if you could, uh, you know, if you wanted well, to play one uh, of our own. Um, before we do that, is it okay if I can share one more flag that I got? Because I mentioned three, the Essex County, the U.S. flag, and there's another one. Yeah, totally. I'll, I'll go over that real quick, and then I'll quiz you. Okay. Um, the flag of the city of Doral. That's a one-of-a-kind one. Um, what? So Doral, Florida, D-O-R-A-L. Okay. And um, it's kind of like the economic hub of the county. It's, um, it's very well off. There's like no homeless people here at all. It's, everyone's like well off or at least comfortable. Um, the flag of Doral, is the, it has the city seal on 13 gold and blue stripes. Um, it's, it's actually kind of, I actually kind of like it. But it's not the best, but still. Anyways, you know I'm gonna the have story, to yeah, on Wikipedia, the digital rendition is not great, but you get the idea. Um, so the story behind it is November 3rd, uh, November 11th of last year, Veterans Day. Um, I went to the ceremony, the local ceremony where the former mayor was hosting and they had a bunch of veterans, and the police explorers and civil air patrol, which I'm a part of, uh, go. And I brought my big American flag on a pole, um, and you know, to commemorate. And I had the biggest flag in the ceremony. And nice. The when, after the procession and on the thirteenth uh... um, this year, and after school, you know, I go semi-formal because we're going to meet the mayor. And I lost the audio video for a bit here and could not recover it. The gist of it, though, is that Danny went to go see the mayor, uh, who is new in town, but the previous mayor had made a promise mm -hmm. to get them the flag of Dural. Uh, their hometown. So we'll p 
pick up uh, kind of with that. She told me that she will fulfill the promise. Otherwise, it would not have been able to be done. But because I had been promised, you know, by the previous mayor, she said, you know what? This kid was promised. Yeah. Yeah, as a new mayor. Yeah, that makes sense. And Danny continued to say things that made sense. Anyway, the next part is this. And we, I brought some of my 12 by 18 inch flags to share. My parents talked about, you know, like life in the city, issues in the city, what we could do as a people and for her to improve the city. It was a really fun conversation. It was honestly, she's an amazing person. Um, and she seems to be running the city pretty well too. So I respect that a lot. And, um, we and then she gave me the flag of Durrell, but not just in any way. She had it folded up and put it in a triangular shadow box, which honestly caught me off guard. I was just like, "You did all that for me?" Yeah, wow. Like, j- like just just like she was giving me a flag alone is shocking, but that she you know had it be put, she had the time and effort to put it in, fold it up and put it in this triangular shadow box, which I actually have on my shelf up here. Uh, Honestly, it's impressive. She's an amazing person. And that's yeah. Doral, so now, Doral Florida. I always called it Doral, I think, in my head, but yeah. Yeah, that's what the navigation system uh, sometimes used to call it. Oh, yeah. In our my, car, Doral. Yeah. You don't want to know what it does for Chattanooga and Ottawa. Like, yeah. Oh, God. It has a hard time. <laughs> Chattanooga. <laughs> it's yeah. always fun. Yeah. All right. Now, the quiz, right? Yeah, let's let's go into it. Let's um we don't have a ton of time, but like if you want to quiz me on like, you know, 10 tops probably of them, pick sure. the hardest ones. Actually, don't pick the hardest ones, pick some that I'll know. Um Yeah. You know, um, all your heart. <laughs> and if you need hints, I'll gladly give them to you. And I probably So, will. so you want me to send them to you on Discord? So, uh yeah, sure. Or if you got them handy, you can just hold them up on the screen, but either way. Um Actually, I might do that because the flags I have, you might have a lot of trouble with. Uh, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll, send, I'll send you two digitally, and then I'll show the rest um, that I actually have in my collection. Okay. So perfect. I'll send I'll send two of them at the same time, but you you'll guess the first one first, and then the second one. So Certainly here you go. Try. All right. So go ahead. Let's okay. See. So. All right, so this first one that's the purple one, yeah. Um, I know this is a... This is one of the Japanese flags, I think. Yes, you are correct. This is like one of the, you know, prefecture level, whatever flags in it Japan. Is. Um, the fact that I know it, I'm guessing that it is Tokyo. Correct, it is okay. indeed Tokyo. All right, I wasn't... Tokyo, okay. Japan. <laughs> Wasn't expecting Good to get job. that one. I see why you sent these two at the same time, though. They're kind of similar enough in design. Well, the central element is anyway. Yeah. Uh, now, what's the second flag? Second one. Uh... And I'll give you a hint. This one is a fictional flag. Okay. I was going to guess it was like an NGO or something like that. Um, no, it's a fictional flag. For a fictional flag. Uh... For the listeners, it's oh man, what is it like a tricolor kind of? It is a uh, vertical triband, um, blue, white, blue, with a compass rose in a sort of snowflake stylized manner. In the but it's also a Canadian pale kind of, where the middle white is. Yeah, bigger. yeah, but the aspect ratio of the flag itself is like four to five. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I know that one. And I'll give you another hint. We were talking about it earlier. It's from a video game. From a video game? Yeah, and we were talking about it earlier. Is it from Neverwinter Nights or something? No. Oh. And, uh, we, we were actually. Yeah, we were. We were. We were talking about this game. Uh, I. I don't think I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'll give you another hint. It's from Ace Combat. Oh. Then I'm definitely not going to get it because I haven't played that game in years. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Republic of Emeria, the country you fight for in Ace Combat Six. Okay, okay, Liberation. okay. Yeah, it yeah, rings a bell now. Is the flag of Emeria? But it's been yeah, that is the Emerian flag. So long since I played that game. Emeria. Yeah. Okay, and you have this one? Like you own both of these? 
I don't own the Amerian flag. I have a patch of the flag of Tokyo. That's the only thing I have of Tokyo. Gotcha. All right. um, but the Amerian flag is not really available for sale online. The Belkin and the uh, Erusian ones are on Fion Shop that I mentioned earlier. Those are the only ones I've managed to find. They're, those those are both countries from Ace Combat. Their flags are available for sale. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Give me some real ones. Give me some... <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you some real ones. Some well, ones that Tokyo I was real. might know. Okay, so I'll set aside the ones that I've already showed you uh, earlier, uh, like Miami or Afghanistan's. Um, I'll try and give a brief description to the listeners as well. Okay, I'm setting aside these so I don't get confused. If possible. Uh, yes. Da -da 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 -da. Um, okay, I'll start off a little bit easier. Oh, excuse me. Here, you might get it. Let's see. Okay, so that's Iraq, but uh, like Saddam Hussein's Iraq? Correct. Okay. Is, for the listeners, it is a horizontal triband of red, white, and black with three stars and Allahu Akbar, God of the Greatest, written in Kufic script. I don't know. I think it's Kufic script. I don't remember. Or is Kufic script the more like blocky, jarry one? I can't remember either. But it's written in a particular form of Arabic, and this is the flag of Saddam Hussein's Iraq with the three stars. Um, okay. It was like Next handwriting, one. wasn't it? Supposedly, anyway. But here, let's see if you know this one. This one might be a little bit easier. I don't know. Oh, God, I know this one, but I. uh is it in europe yes technically um in the sense that it's it's managed it's uh, mandated by a european country it's not one of the channel islands is it the channel islands is along the english channel right yeah it is not yeah although it's actually yeah. kind of reminiscent of one guernsey but that's, that's not, yeah this I is think not that's guernsey. What I thinking of oh this man it's not guernsey I... I'll give you another hint. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's Portuguese. Okay, but it's not the Azores. No, close. Uh, what else do they have? It's not. No, that's Spanish. Uh. Uh, I don't know. I should know. I don't know. One last hint. It might get you. You might get it. Starts with the letter M. M as in Mary. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Madeira. Madeira. Madeira, okay. This is the flag of Madeira. I got it at a little flag shop in Porto, Portugal. Sure. Sure. So that. And where is Madeira? So that's the flag. It's not far from the Azores. It's in the Atlantic off the coast of Africa. I'm constantly surprised by how far in the middle of nowhere the Azores are. Yeah, same thing with the Canaries. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Canaries fun are fact, there. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is just north of fun, the... Fun fact about Madeira. Cristiano Ronaldo was born in the island of Madeira. And, and Madeira... I did not know that. And Madeira is a get... big deal. Like, you will see, like, Ronaldo stuff. Uh, I haven't been, but that's what Oh, I, I bet, yeah. I Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Might go for one of the bigger flags, actually. Not, one of the bigger ones. Um, bonus ones, if you can guess the two in the back. These are the two bonus ones. What, the Swiss one? No, oh, that is There's Swiss, yeah, this is Switzerland one, and what's the other one? It's okay if you don't get it. I won't. Count. It's not Suta. Nope. No. Let's see what you say. It's very similar. Very similar. Uh, I don't think I know that one. It's from Portugal. Uh, it's not the Azores. It's not. I don't know. Is it just like a like? Is it like Lisbon or Porto yep. or? 
It is Lisbon? It is Lisbon. Okay. It's Lisboa, yeah. It is indeed Lisboa. All right, sweet. Then points to me. Which one is this one? Oh, that's Empire. Ethiopia. But Ethiopia during, uh, like, Haile yeah, Selassie's reign, I think. Imperial. It's the empire, yeah. But even within the empire, I think there was various ones where the lion was holding a cross for a while and then, like, a scepter for a while. Or or not a scepter, a uh, like a scimitar, like a sword. During the Republic, well, it was not the Republic, but during the transition period between the monarchy and the Derg, the communist regime, it was a spear for about a year. That's what it is. That's what it was. It was, it was yeah. a spear. They, they changed the cross for spear and they removed the crown. Yes. Uh, let's All right. Nailed it. Too easy. It. <laughs> too easy. Go on. Um, we all know this one. That's and Tibet. It's Tibet. I'm not going to count it. Okay. That is Geneva. Correct. Ding, ding, there. ding. Uh, Got my camera uh, stolen from there, so I don't have any pictures of me being in Geneva, but I was uh, there. Damn. Friggin' 2009. That is the Azores. I can tell even from what I can see. Yeah. Yeah, the Azores. Azores. Yep. Azores. How are you pronounce it in Portuguese? Or Azores. You pronounce it like a not dang American. Yeah, the Azores. Azores or whatever. <laughs> uh, America. Um, yeah, I heard of that one. I got this one tailored for me. At, so uh, that's like Second Spanish Republic, but without the crest, or is it? Without the Guadalajara. What? This yeah. Is this. Yeah. Um, so that's South Vietnam. Correct. My best friend is um, half South Vietnamese. Gotcha. Yeah, we all know Portugal. Um, I'm going to go for a couple more, a few more small ones because all the big ones are a bit easy. Sure. Let's uh, like just let... Two, three more. Here's a good one. Okay, so the Royal Scotland, Royal Scottish one. Yeah, the Royal Banner of Scotland. Yep. A couple more, which is this one. That is... Mm. <laughs> That, I'll, give you a, that, I'll give you a bunch. Is that a former flag of somewhere? Yes, most of these are actually right former flags. Yeah. Both of these are former, by the way. Okay, the one in your left hand is the former... Um, is it Mauritius? Close. Similar Maldives. names. Nope. Ah, what is it? Uh, Maldives is back there where I'm pointing. That's Maldives. I know the one... Yeah, the one with the yellow is pretty much the same now except it's got red on the top and red on the bottom correct but i but cannot the remember name? i thought it was mauritius and now and now i'm out of ideas <laughs> i'll just tell you because you already you already know what it is mauritania mauritania okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they changed the cup they changed the flag in 2017. one of those maurs and then this one looks like a uh, pakistan ish it's not nope. Kashmir because that's different. Um, it's actually not even in Asia. Okay, is it in Africa? Yes. Mm. And I'll and I'll throw a bonus one because both of these are from the same place. Okay, so oh man, I don't know, like Sudan or uh, Mali, no, somewhere where they speak Arabic though. Or have Arabic script yeah. anyway. They actually also speak more French. And French? They more they speak more French because they're so is it Mali, Chad, Cameroon? Uh one last hint, it's an island country. Niger. Oh, Seychelles? Nope. Mm. I have the former flag of Seychelles on my Madagascar? Shelf. No. No, close, very close. Geographically. Then Mauritius? <laughs> I don't know. Nope. No, uh, Comoros? Got it. Okay, okay, Comoros. Former flags of Comoros from uh, 1992 to 1996 and 1996 to 2002, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah wouldn't have guessed that, but like, I think I've got, yeah. Okay, I've got the current flag of Comoros on my bunting, like, out of view over here, but... I have it towards the back somewhere over here. Uh, it's that here. similar one, but with gold, white, red, and blue stripes, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. 
Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. Um, do you have room for two more? We can do two more. Um, dark, like, like contextually, they're dark. Um, but they're still very nice flags. Okay. Um, By the way, this is brown. This, despite the colors, the color it's actually a brown stripe. Okay, so the the one with the bird is that like a former flag of like Uganda or something? No, it is in Africa. Both of these are in Africa. Tanzania, Zanzibar. Nope. Um, the brown one. God bless. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm going to know. I'll give you a couple of hints. Apartheid South Africa. Bantu stands. So Lesotho is one of them? or Lesotho is its own country. Oh, you're talking about... Oh, so these are subdivisions of... Apartheid South Africa. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, neither one of them is the Orange Free State. Nope. So and, uh... Transvaal? No. I'm trying to think of the other parts of South Africa. Orange Free State, Transvaal. Uh... It's a Bantu a homeland. I have to admit that I don't know. You don't know? No. Unless it's called Bantu Stan. No, no. They're... Bantu Stan's with the subdivisions. Um... These, the brown stripe one, is Transki or Transke. I don't know how to pronounce it. Transke. Okay. And the other one is Siske. Both of these were uh, homelands for the Hosha people. I don't know how to pronounce it. X O H O S A. I'll just say Hosha. For some yeah, yeah. Um, bonus ones, not a guessing game, but they're related. Um, former flag of Lesuru from 1987 yeah, to 2006. One. I got this one. This is really nice. The bottom kind of broke off a little, so I got it for discounted. But um, and then a couple more bonus ones. These are, the, this is the flag of the African National Congress, Nelson Mandela's party, that won the first democratic elections in South Africa in 1994. Okay. And this is SWAPO, Southwest African People's Organization, the political party that gained Namibia's independence from South Africa. I was, okay, I was thinking Namibia when you said it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, these are both uh, political party flags. All right. Yeah, I never would have got that, but it does speak to uh, the just like the breadth and like uh, the depth of the flags that you have, really. Yeah, I because, have. Yeah, these are not any ones that I have. Like the most obscure ones I have are, you know, like the SAR Protectorate or uh, Biafra or I couldn't even name the most obscure ones. I guess it depends on your point of view. Too, you also but, have the you, you have the Trans-Caucasian uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. Or I do called. have that. That one's no. a, a more of a deep cut. Yeah. Yeah, that one is. I don't even know how you got that one. Yeah, yeah, that one is only around for a couple of years, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you have sure. like a ton that fit that that uh, criteria, more or less. Yeah. So. And of course, the old shitty Georgia state flag. Oh <laughs> yeah, the one that Tony Purdue chased out of town. <laughs> yeah, the one at Nava here voted the worst flag in North America in two thousand. Yeah, because correctly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Awful. Yeah, it has a little bit of a charm to it. Do his job. What? As governor, like the governor did not get reelected, and a lot of people are like, "Yeah, it was probably in no small part because of that flag that he introduced." Yeah. Imagine having your own political career ruined because you designed a crappy flag. Um. God. Well, yeah, I, I, I can't that. imagine that actually. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It has a little bit of a charm awful. to it, though. I'll admit, it's it's like the bad aspect kind of has the charm to it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It anyway, funny. it's getting to time to close up here. Let's um, go ahead and let people know where they can find you, follow you, you know, uh, uh, track your collection, any of that good stuff. Yes, you can uh, follow me on Instagram on two accounts, which one of which I don't use much. 305 flag underscore flags, 305 underscore flags. Uh, you'll notice it because it has this flag as the profile picture. I don't post on it much. I have thought about it. I'm going to try. My main account, 
which is where I post more of my general stuff and a lot of my flag stuff, um, is uh, at Panamaniac2007, no capital letters. So if you want to check me out, feel free on Instagram. Yeah. I don't really have any other social media platforms that I use much. But that's that's not right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Flag Session, good friends of the show. Um, for those who haven't seen the last episode, the one before this, go check that out. We have Flag Session. It's a kind of a special episode, but Flag Session is on it. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's uh, for your plugs. And then for ours, I suspect anyone who has made it this far knows where to follow the show. Anywhere there are at signs, we are at flagged for content, like the number, the digit for um that's Twitter, which I will refuse to call by the new name. That's threads. We're on there now. I don't really use it that much, but you know, you know, pretty much anywhere there's an at sign, you can find us or at our link tree. If you just search link tree slash flagged for content, all spelled out, that is going to be the best place to find all of our links and interact the most with the show. Um, obviously I do want to push our discord as well, because that is kind of how Daniel got, you know, more involved with the show, more involved with the community that we're building and everything here. So go check that out, especially if you want to maybe be on an upcoming episode. Maybe you got some interesting stuff to say, uh, an interesting collection, you know, what have you go check that out as well. So I think that is pretty much it for us today. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for us today. I constantly forget how to close this show. So Daniel, is there anything you could do to help me out here? Besides just typical thank you as well. Thank you for tuning in. Todachava. Nihitchot. Erev tov. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. Whatever Danny said, y'all have a good night. And this episode has been flagged for content. Thanks for listening, y'all. Toda. <laughs> All right. Right on. That was so great. That was it. Oh. That was fun. Was it? I'm, I hope so. Flagged for Content is a Flags for Good podcast. Go to flagsforgood.com for more info.